they they had a bunch set like inside and then they all they broke off and went outside and I was like, why is there an offensive tackle going outside wide? What are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it's it's done now. Welcome to My Got a Podcast. I'm Jim Wood. In this episode, John Powell and I review Georgia's 49-3 season opening win over Oregon in the Chick-fil-A kickoff. We talk about the tailgating scene around the bends, how much fun we had getting to meet some of you, and of course the game itself. As always, remember to check out store.mygotapodcast.com to see our latest merch. And you can follow us on social media at My Got a Podcast. Finally, we'd love for all of you to come join us at Dog Central. That's D-A-W-G-S Central.com. Now, let's join the conversation in progress. So it definitely went uh, better than expected. Definitely, I mean, especially for me. I know you you were even more confident than I was, but like, I'm, a, I'm assuming it was still a bigger beatdown even than you thought, right? Uh, yes. I, I mean, obviously my score prediction um, had them putting up a little bit more of a fight, but... Um, I don't even remember what my score prediction was, but I certainly did not expect us to virtually shut them out. Yeah. Uh, which which I think, I think if everybody were to, if you were to run around the tailgate uh, on Saturday, which we need to talk about that, obviously. Uh, yeah. If you were running around the tailgate and take a poll, like, hey, who here thinks that Oregon's only going to get three points today? I'd get, I would be, I would be, <laughs> Like that, like eighty percent, eighty ninety percent of them would have said, "No way, dude." <laughs> yeah, seriously. I mean, I know, like, we did talk about like that the whole predicted score thing, right? Have had them in the twenties, and we thought that was high. Uh, but man, <laughs> I didn't expect three. Okay, so I looked it up. You had forty five to eighteen, uh, so you're pretty close on our score. Um, I had us thirty four mm-hmm. to seventeen. I had us thirty four to seventeen. So way. way uh, for, far exceeded my expectations, but yeah, I guess we could have. I, maybe we could have just led with the day a bit because uh, it, it was a great day. So you did. You were able to make it uh, for the tailgate, at least. Um, I was hopeful. I was hopeful, yes. and it was a game time decision. Uh, there was much negotiating in my family and <laughs> in, in relation to it. I think that my wife wasn't too sure about me taking any of the kids down there but uh at the end of the day we we had a great time took my teenager down um just me and her we both have uh, i don't know if you know this jim but uh we we have a birthday coming up here next week um we both have the same birthday september 8th so um i kind of pitched it like that (laughs) (laughs) nice nice well done well played it was cool too because you know you had said on the show um that you were you know doubtful I guess you know, I think we had a pretty low percentage chance. You know, it's funny. Just like I ran into people that listen, right? And we're like, "Oh, so you know, so I guess John's not here." And I was like, "No, he is here." <laughs> um, we were over at Greg's. <laughs> we were over at Greg's tailgate. So shout out to Greg. Uh, ATD tailgate delivered again. Uh, great time was had. I said I was in Greg and Rodeo Dog and all those guys. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And we have, and Carter has joined the podcast. Amazing, um, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. It was it was a great time. It was a great time. I'm glad we got to meet up. Uh, we had the like texting each other, uh, and then we were like right next to each other, <laughs> trying to go from one tailgate to the next. Um, when I, I, I was in, I was in tailgate I was in tailgate transition. So I started out the morning over at the players' lounge. Um, I got to do the Dog Central live show you know for about i don't know i was on about 10 15 minutes with uh graham and john and josh was producing that so that was a lot of fun got to meet a lot of folks over there then headed on over to to greg's met a lot of people there had my dad with me uh my sister my nephew um it was a big time um so yeah man, are, and are you sure that <laughs> held off right the weather holding off was awesome because like there was all that rain in the forecast and not a drop it it did hold off. It was I was I was impressive. I will get to the weather part in a second because you weren't there for um, mm. the the significant weather event. Um, <laughs> okay. I was gonna say, are you sure? Are you sure we shouldn't categorize this as Frip Dog? Had you with him? <laughs> oh, I just because I just everybody, yeah. everybody's everybody's like, I'm Frip Dog. Oh, your dad's Frip Dog. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Always happens. It always happens. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh. Yeah, everyone's like, I love your dad. I was like, I love my dad too. He's pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, my dad's great. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, a good, it was good. It was a good, it was a great time. Um, I probably could have, I probably could have gotten there for the, the dog central thing. Had I not brought my teenager, I will say that. Mm. Um, mm. I came yeah. downstairs ready to go. And she was literally laying on the couch in pajamas <laughs> and a Georgia shirt. And was like, I think I might want to go. And I was like, well, I'm leaving, so you need to get ready. <laughs> so <laughs> put, put, put me about 30, 30, 45 minutes behind schedule. All good. All good. My, uh, it was pretty amazing. My, my nephew, uh, when we got there, like hopped on the – uh, the Discord server for the DGD Mafia was all over that, and because they were posting updates throughout the day on like what players were there and etc. So we were actually had left, and then my nephew was like, "Todd Gurley's here! Todd Gurley's here!" So we turned around and went back, um, and got a uh, got to meet Todd. Um, so yeah, man, met Todd Gurley, Keith Marshall, um, that's Mar- awesome. Um, who else? Marlo Herrera, uh, Tavares King, and like. I'll just say like all of them were incredibly nice. Like it was everything you would kind of hope, hope it to be um, just super nice, talkative, yeah. um, you know, humble, gracious, all those things uh, kind of made you feel good to be a Georgia bulldog, you know, and like those guys definitely represent well for, for bulldog nation. So that, that was really cool. That was really cool. That's awesome, man. Um, I'm, I'm super jealous. Did you guys get autographs or anything like that or? No, no, I, I, and I actually really didn't get my picture taken with many people. We did, like, we got my nephew's picture with pretty much everyone. Um, we got a picture with Keith Marshall. We got a big family picture with uh, Todd Gurley. Um, but that was it. Just kept it casual. You know, I don't know. Like, I guess I feel like I'm kind of old now. I'm never sure, like, is this weird if I ask for a picture? <laughs> um, we were just kind of hanging out talking. So um, I did, uh, you know, we talked to... Massaqua was was very uh, in, encourageable about about the podcast because I had the hat on and everything, so he was interested to talk about that. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, like I said, man, yeah, everyone everyone's super nice and engaging. It was that was pretty fun. Right. I think the same can the same can be said about Bobby Wilson and everyone at the tailgate <laughs> at ATD. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, man, it was it, it was great. The 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 weather, I will say, like we mentioned the weather, the weather after everybody left, I mean, it was, it was pretty windy. I feel like in general, but like after everybody left, there were gusts of wind that literally <laughs> took out, the, um, took out a couple of tents at the tailgate. So that was, uh, that was interesting for the, for the parking lot crew, um, to, to fix and adjust, but, um, all, all was yeah. good. Everything, everything was, was resolved. Nice. Yeah, I remember I got a text from you in the middle of the game that like the antenna was blown over or something, right? Well, the tent yeah. flipped, which literally <laughs> ripped out the antenna from the TV, and the TV fell. Um, gotcha. But I guess it was fine because we got it all back up. You know, everything seemed like it was fine, but put it all back together, and <laughs> everything went continued without a hitch. But yeah, dude, that was that was a little crazy because I wasn't even paying attention. Like when it when it happened, I was like talking to someone, and my daughter goes, "Oh, dad! Oh, dad! Oh, dad!" <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like to me the weather kind of came through the tailgate, like the Georgia defense came through Oregon. Yes, yes, Jim. The swirling winds, the swirling winds were were an impact <laughs> in the game. <laughs> I laughed. I laughed a little too hard when you texted that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So, all right, like when. I like so like stats wise um is it would be like one of those like ESPN stats and info things that like I don't know like when's the last time Georgia scored a touchdown on their first seven possessions you know I mean like dude, dude seriously like absolute that was absolute domination on both sides of the ball it was unbelievable I mean it was pretty much 100% efficiency right like I think we only had one punt right yeah, and it was glorious, by the way. Which we can get that. Go ahead and get that out of the way, because that was actually one of the one of the funnier uh, Twitter interactions that I thought we had. Because you know, we we got we finally get to see our Aussie punter, and then he rips off. I believe it was. I'm just doing this from memory. I'm not looking up the stat. Uh, 
Oh, I have the stats in front of me. I believe it was a 53 yard punt um, from what I could remember, which was uh, pretty awesome. And then, um, so right after we hit the punt, I had, we tweeted something out from the account. And uh, James, this is Jimmy Duncan. He, he's he, he has submitted some questions before, but he, he said this is a punt in a crocodile D accent is what he tweeted, which was I thought that was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously, that's not a punt. This is a punt. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You did it much better than I did with the actual accent. Uh, so yeah, that's exactly how that felt. So hey, you know, Aussie punter, uh, one punt. Boomed it. Uh, so shout out Brett Thorson. Uh, that was pretty awesome. And he got like mugged on the sideline when he came back to the sideline by all, by the whole team. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> no, no offense, Mr. Thorson. Uh, I hope that we never see you play. <laughs> <laughs> right, seriously, dude. How about that though? I mean, because like that was one of the things you said, right? We're like, hopefully the punting's not going to matter because we're not going to really punt. I mean, one punt. Like I didn't expect that to actually happen. Uh, that was yeah, that seriously. Was pretty cool. Uh, but like, I mean, can we finally put the mailman stuff to bed? Like, I, I know we've, we've done it, you and I have for a while, but there have been some who, who keep wanting to say these things. I mean, he had an incredible performance. He did everything you would want. Um, the, I mean, the, like just statistically 25 of 31, 368 yards, two touchdowns, uh, pretty dang good. Uh, and he had a, I mean, whatever you want to call it, like Johnny Manziel type moment, Heisman moment, whatever, on the touchdown pass to Lad, Lad McConkey, where he's you know had all day. Which, by the way, that's another thing, right? When when you the offensive line looked incredible, he had all day for the most part, uh, not a whole lot of pressure, running around, uh, switched the ball into his left hand so he you know wouldn't get stripped, put it back in his right hand and threw it to wide open McConkey, which. You couldn't see it on TV as the play was like as the play was unfolding from our seats, we could see. Like McConkey was like literally waving his hands because he was standing there wide <laughs> yeah. open, um, and then yeah. like you know, it, uh, mailman was able to buy enough time to get it out to him. It was, it was pretty awesome. Yeah, that was that was crazy. I saw the I saw the replay. Obviously, um, I uh, you know with the TVs and all that stuff, and the, not to mention like all the all the extracurriculars that goes on uh, in the parking lot and stuff. I wasn't quite as attuned. Not to mention mm-hmm. some of the liquid, you know, the liquid lubrication that was going on. So, I did not notice that on the on the broadcast. However, I did see in, on the replay, like they had, a, they actually showed a replay of that exact play, and he was like, it was, it was on the bottom of the screen, and he was just like, just stand right here and wait, stand right here and wait. Although yeah, I man. will say, I think if if John uh, uh, John John tweeted about that, like that, you know if we were picking nits or whatever um, to if he had to do that over again, he probably would have Kirby probably would have preferred that he threw it to uh, I think it was, I think it was Macintosh that was coming out in the flat right there. Had he just mm-hmm. like tossed it a little, you know, let him a little bit. He probably runs that into the, the corner, the corner of the end zone. Um, right. Cause you know, there's just little things. You know, if you if you got to nitpick over a you know forty something point win, um, <laughs> you know right. that's a, that's a good position. That's a good position to be in. I'll give another one. Speaking of Lad McConkey, um, I feel like it was the exact same play that he. It was the exact same uh, position on the field. Um, it looked like it was the exact same play. We could probably ask Graham to to take a look at it, but. I believe that he threw a deep ball to Lad McConkey, or he was trying to throw a deep ball to Lad McConkey, um, similar to the throw that he made to A.D. Mitchell. Um, they obviously didn't need a touchdown, but um, it looked like it was the exact same play. But, man, he overthrew Lad bad. Lad was wide open on that play, too, and he mm, missed him. Yeah, so I know. I, 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 know I, I have a feeling that there's still... I have a feeling there's still going to be some Stetson haters out there on just those things alone. Like... <laughs> It's it's yeah. unfortunate that we have we have the that that fan base um, that's out there that that still you know doubts Stetson even though he's shown way more than you know way more than should be required to give him your trust. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I, at this point, that just kind of is what it is. But you know, he he had a heck of a day, um, and even just like watching kind of like the the shows afterwards and stuff, like watching the SEC Network this morning. 
they were pretty much saying the same thing. Um, you know, it's time to give him this due. So, um, but I do think like what the things you were just going through, like those are the things that Kirby's going to be doing too, right? Because like you kind of say, mm-hmm. you're 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 never as bad as you think you are after a loss, and you're never as good as you think you are after a win. Um, so I'm sure he's going to find plenty of things to show them that they could do better um, because that's what coaches do, right? They want to kind of <laughs> they're you know they, they are kids, and um, although I mean Stetson's getting up there, <laughs> I don't know if Stetson's still a kid anymore, uh, but. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so yeah, I'm, sure. I'm sure I'm sure the coaches will be doing that. Uh, I, don't know, I guess other things that stood out to me, like Kenny McIntosh uh, was the leading pass catcher. Um, I mean, he had a heck of a day. He he looked awesome. Um, okay, so he was targeted nine times, nine nine targets, nine receptions for 117 yards. Uh, that's pretty incredible. Um, yeah, wow. that's that, that's <laughs> that, that's that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I think that uh, I think that he's definitely going to be a weapon. It's a little concerning on the running side of the ball, like that he wasn't more like that he didn't have such you know better stats than mm. you'd like to have your your starting running back because he only ran the ball five times for eighteen yards, three point six yards a carry. I mean, he did have a touchdown. I don't know. I, I don't know what the plan is for him at running back. Like, obviously, that it just seems like that he's just going to be a weapon out in the passing game, which is fine. Um, yeah. that just means that if he's not going to be a feature back in terms of the rushing game, I'm worried about the longevity of Milton, which to his credit, like he looked good He did know, look for, good. for coming off like a, for coming for, for getting banged up and losing some of those snaps. Like he looked good. So kudos yeah. to him. Um, the emergence of Dejan Edwards and then Branson Robinson got some time in at the end of the game, you know, the game was well in hand, but he was averaging six and a half yards a carry. Like he had, he had the bigger average across the board. So, um, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, the 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 receiving game. To be fair, um, <laughs> he did he did spray the ball around to all of the different receivers. <laughs> exactly. Um, I was just counting up ten different receivers caught a pass. I was just about to say, how are you counting? <laughs> yeah sorry um, yeah, I, was kinda, we, yeah so. I also i also want to call out in terms of the receiving game I'll, I'll call out darnell washington um yeah dude that guy is a that guy is just an absolute problem out 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 as a wide receiver um yeah i remember there was one point when i was watching watching the review or you know watching the the recording um they they had a bunch set like inside and then they all they broke off and went outside and I was like why is there an offensive tackle going outside wide what are they doing <laughs> <laughs> oh oh it's it's done now <laughs> that, that's amazing Silly me that's incredible <laughs> yeah man I mean spread the ball around the the tight ends I mean they they delivered like and here's the thing too like you know tight ends are there to catch passes but they're also there to block. And they were all blocking incredibly well. Um, and I'll include Avery Gilbert in that. And I'll include Oscar Delp in that as well. I uh, saw some incredible blocks. And I feel like Marcus Rosemi Jack Saint picked up where he left off it, um, as, far, as far as blocking goes. Like the kind of last thing we remember of him from the national championship game is the ceiling block on the Brock Bowers touchdown towards the end of the game. And, I mean, he was leveling guys again. Uh, so he looked good. Uh also looking good out there. The number one, uh, you know, Rosemary uh, Jack Saint changed numbers. Uh, you know, only only one catch for, for twelve yards, but I thought he looked good. Um, our guy Kieras didn't get in into like the passing game, super involved until later in the game, but ended up with three catches for forty five yards. Um, and Ad Mitchell, I think, looked every bit the part that we were hoping he would. Uh, that touchdown catch. First, I mean, the amazing throw from Stetson is the back, back shoulder fade. I mean, I don't, you know, like Aaron Murray and Fromm were known for doing that here at Georgia. I don't know that either of them could have thrown a prettier ball or a better place ball than Stetson did there. And then great catch by AD. So um, I'm sure we're forgetting something. But, I mean, what a what an offensive performance. I, you know, I had kind of talked to preseason, like, were we overthinking it and trying to talk about the offense too much when really this was just going to be, you know, it's a Kirby smart team, therefore great defense. And the defense did live up to what we hoped it would and then some, but 
the offense is it's improved. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I would say that, that having a full off season with Stetson as the starter, getting all the number one snaps, like they came out and, you know, I mean, you can't ask for much better than 100% touchdown ratios, 100% in the red zone. <laughs> like you, if if yeah. we go every, every, if we go the entire season and have seven straight possessions every game and we're scoring touchdowns, we are going to absolutely steamroll this entire college football world it'll be epically better than lsu (laughs) right right yeah it was it was impressive um and i think we did see um we were we were i say we i was repeating what graham had said but as far as the starting offensive line that kind of panned out how how we would thought with with trust at left guard but we we saw a lot of rotation there i know willock did get in and i saw mims in there as well so uh they, they got in like the backup line. So a lot of guys got good quality reps. Um, yeah. There's the only thing that only, all right. So I'll, I'll give you like my surprise from just the offensive perspective. I, I have a surprise. Like I, I was, I was very surprised at how little we tried to throw the ball to a reek. Like I, I kind of thought that there was going to be more involvement of, of him in the offense. Not saying that that's good or bad, or maybe it's this game or that game. But like, I was I was caught off guard by the fact that he didn't have a single catch in the game. So, I would agree. Yeah, yeah, that is that is true. Yeah, he was only targeted one time. Uh, looking at the right the, the the stats that UGA threw out there. So I would agree. I would definitely agree. Yep. Um, and he, he came out there. He I would think he came into the game later. I guess than I would have expected too. So. Correct. Yep. I'm trying to think if there's any, you know, Dejan Edwards didn't come in and get meaningful snaps until I think, feel like the game was beyond him or yeah. you know, beyond you, us or whatever, or beyond them. You got to, you got to rewatch it. He, he was in there early. Okay. He was in, he was in there. In Maybe the first that was just, he was okay. Well, yeah. I mean, he had four, he had four carries, so he must not have been in there that much. He was in, um, yeah, no, but he, he was there. Um, and he also had two two catches, so um, yeah, he definitely. I, I felt like Edwards. I would say I, I felt like I mean he he played that the the traditional kind of Georgia third back, right? Like you know we we kind of run those three guys. Yeah. I mean he's not in there as much as Milton, um, and and uh, and McIntosh were, but I feel like he he kind of played the traditional role of the of the third Georgia tailback. <clears throat> But yeah, definitely agree on Arik. Uh, thought thought we would see more from him earlier. I don't know what if that says anything or, or not. Like if there's anything to read into that or or what. You know, I mean, he's working his way back in. Um, didn't play last year, so we'll see. The snap counts for for Edwards is actually like he was he actually played less than Arik, which that's why I say that. Like when I'm looking at the snap counts and going back to how I felt about things, like he only had twelve. He's only in on 12 snaps and Eric was in on 13. So I don't know. Okay. That, that, that was my only, that was my only surprise. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's fair. Maybe just on the volume. I, I, I just remember like my dad pointing out to me early in the game, like, Whoa, Edwards is already in there um, somewhere pretty early. So I don't know. Maybe I'll have to go back and watch it yet again. <laughs> Cause I have already rewatched the game once I, I watched it this morning. Um, right, I have to go right, right. Cool. It's funny though, because you know you talk about that. I think one of the things that uh, I can't remember what Oregon player it was or what where where I saw this, um, but they I guess what Oregon was saying like they don't have they don't have second string players. They just have other players. <laughs> <laughs> I saw, yeah, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Uh, but don't don't tell Achilles. It, it Smith is an that, it, just, it is. Yeah, yeah. Don't tell Achilles Smith that we have better players though, because he'll get mad. Uh, yeah, seriously, dude. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the what the deal is with that. I don't know how you, anybody that like follows football can look at the recruiting rankings over the last, you know, five six years or whatever since Kirby got to Georgia, and can you know with a straight face say that you know we don't have better players. Like really, he didn't. Yeah, like, did I feel you- like the. the yeah, they were taking that as like a personal slight at the at the you know manhood of of the players at Oregon, and I feel like that was just ridiculous. 
Yeah, he's trying to make something out of nothing. I mean, yeah. And like, did yeah, you watch the game? Exactly. Like, yeah, George has better players. <laughs> like, come on. Um, yeah, I mean, we were shedding blocks. We were hurtling people. Like, our, our, <laughs> our 300 pound tight end is hurtling your guys. Like, come on now. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. Um, so. On the defensive side, I think so. So we did see uh, Smile Munden start at linebacker. Those are that we had kind of questioned and talked about. Um, what we didn't talk about uh, was Michael Williams getting the start. Which uh, you know, um, we, we we can't go by an episode without saying something like, "If you subscribe to Duck Central, that actually uh, Jason posted that the morning before the game. Um, so that was out there. Um, so just another plug there." Uh, you, you can you can get uh, great information like that. Could have known that heading into the game, uh, so that was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, played a lot of a lot of young guys, um, and then you know Malachi Starks, uh, holy cow! Like the uh, the pick that he had was a just a, a beautiful play that happened kind of in front of us. Um, I tweeted out from the count from the I tweeted out from the podcast account, holy <laughs> and. You know, thanks. Uh, shout out Coach Trill Bill for quote tweeting it and just saying, sorry, Carter. So, amen. Uh, that was- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was great. Thanks for that, Coach, Tr- Coach Trill. I was, I was giggling a good bit on that one. Yeah, dude, that was a great play. I mean, I feel like that when that happened, I was like, oh, snap, this is about to go down. Like, we're about <laughs> to really – we're about to destroy these guys. It was it was at that moment they realized that, or you know, I realized that they were in way over their head. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it. it I don't know. Like it, the things. I, at least for the first game, played out kind of like we hoped they would, right? Where you had, you know, Jamon Dumas Johnson. I think step did step into that kind of like linebacker, inside linebacker leadership role. Um, played really well um i think also too like the safeties did step up and help with the tackling i mean christopher smith was also flying around the field i mean he he laid some hits in this game that i don't think i've ever seen him do that before yeah no i i I totally agree with you there was a play specifically and i feel like it was on third down or something like that the running back took a handoff or it was a pitch or something like that, but he was in the open field and he was with nothing but green grass in front of him. There was a huge gap. All he had to do was run north and south and it was going to be a, a big gain. But Christopher Smith, his closing speed on that running back was absolutely elite. That's That was another one of those plays that literally jumped off the page at me, was like, holy yeah. cow, I have not seen that before. So yeah, kudos to him uh, on that. But like, man, that was that was he he literally turned that play into like a four yard loss, and I was like, oh yeah. crap, here we go. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It kind of reminded me of like I know different position and everything, but it, the closing speed reminded me of Nicobe Dean's play in the Orange Bowl where he ran down the running back um, against Michigan. Uh-huh. Like what Christopher Smith, I feel like did something similar, and then. Big hit on... Which is crazy because he's coming from a deeper position. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, and then he also laid a huge hit. He turned what probably should have been a huge gain uh, into an incompletion. Uh, and that was the play that he got a little bit shook up on. But, you know, re- some, something happened, I think, with Ringo. Um, they had a guy kind of running open down the field, and uh, Bo Nix threw it inside, and Christopher Smith made him pay for it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so he, he, he looked great, but I don't mean like all the young guys. I mean, you know, for the the all the Georgia defense is going to take a step back, and they only allowed three points to the number eleven team in the country. So, <laughs> yeah, dude. That I mean, you just look at all you have to do is look at the sta- at the snap counts: Malachi Starks, Kamari Lassiter, Keely Ringo, Christopher Smith, Smile Mondon, um, Jamon Dumas Johnson, like. Those guys weren't on the roster last year, and they led the snap counts on the on the defense. Yeah, Malachi Starks. Well, you know, obviously, Fred, obviously Chris, obviously Chris Smith and Keeley were, but you know, most of those guys were not on the team. Yeah, they certainly weren't playing significant snaps like that. They weren't playing right? significant. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I exactly. mean, yeah, but yeah, 
but Malachi Starks, true freshman, led the team uh, in snap count. He, he played more plays than anyone, and he's a true freshman. Uh, had that sensational interception, had another uh, really nice pass breakup. Um, yeah, that was one of the things we were questioning, right? Who's going to be the starting safety over there alongside uh, Christopher, Christopher Smith? And it does look like the future is, is now with, with Malachi Starks. The future is now. Yeah, for sure. We'll see how that we'll see how that progresses over the season, obviously, as they play different teams and different defenses. But um he had more than he had more than double the snaps that, that Dan Jackson had. So Yep. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I, and honestly, like I thought Jackson looked good too. You know? I mean like he looked good when he was he was in there. So um, I mean that's 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 why you have that's why you have these people saying that Georgia doesn't have Georgia doesn't have a second string. They just have other players. <laughs> right. Yeah, seriously. Okay, so I'm looking at the Georgia Dogs. It, it, they've got that uh, the Dan Jackson started. So I, I don't know. I guess Dan Jackson started the first series, uh, but then Malachi Starks came in like right after that. That's, that's interesting. Okay, see, again, I got to go back and watch it again. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, Malachi definitely – Malachi definitely uh, – on. I, I remember it was it was like in the third quarter or something like that. I remember distinctly looking out there. I was like, "Huh, Dan Jackson's not playing. Interesting." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he looked he looked good from he looked good from the get go. Um, I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know. Do you have anything else to say? I, I don't know. Like, really, what else to say about it? I mean, it was um, or at least about the defense specifically. I do have one other thing I wanted to go over, but um, it's. You know, it's a Kirby. Like, I, I think something. Works, right, like it's a Kirby Smart team, and the the defense showed out like 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 a Kirby Smart defense does. Yeah, go ahead. What do you got? Uh, well, the only thing I would say, like, uh, we're we're again picking picking nits so on a forty plus point victory, but um, <laughs> zero sa- zero sacks. Okay. Yeah. Zero sacks and only three tackles for loss, which I feel like is partially like due to. You know, they were quickly trying to get the ball out. I don't think that, you know, Bo Nix didn't really have a whole lot of, like, mm-hmm. it didn't feel like he had a whole lot of time. But, like, at the same time, they were. it felt like that they were trying to get rid of the ball quickly. And you've also got that, you know, that Bo Nix backyard football kind of situation. But, yeah, yeah. Zero, zero sacks, only three tackles for loss. I'm sure that Kirby's not happy with that. Agreed. Yeah, I don't have much to add there. I was going to say, I, I think you're right. I think, I think, uh, you know, everyone had been wondering, could Dan Lanning help scheme something up to help the offense out uh, and like score a lot of points? Um, I, I think he did do some things to help out scheme wise, getting the getting rid of the ball quickly to prevent prevent those types of plays. Uh, but it didn't help him on the uh, on the scoreboard there. So, yeah, yeah. Ultimately, <laughs> what I texted out was that Dan Lanning. He he wasn't able to scheme anything up to win, but he was able to scheme up some things to help them lose less bad. So, <laughs> I think uh, the only the only other thing that uh, I noticed, um, and this is partially from the broadcast side of things, like on the TV, uh, there was we had we were averaging we were averaging like nine, like it, this was in the second quarter, so. This was this was when it was still competitive ish. Um, yeah, we were averaging nine yards per play, like o- almost ten yards per play, which is just crazy. Like you're never going to win a game if you ha- are playing a team that's operating at that level. Yeah, yeah it it was uh, it was a beatdown. <laughs> it was just a pure pure domination, and I think for all of the. the the people that were hopeful uh, for that the Georgia was going to be taking a step back and in this rebuilding uh, mode, uh, they found out on Saturday. Yeah, um, I believe it's the largest. It's the largest margin of victory versus a top ten opponent, opponent or something like that. Mm, man, it was that was huge. Um, I did want to acknowledge a, I, I, you know, <laughs> the, the Georgia, um, like game preview thing did come out after we recorded, like, as I was saying, I didn't have that. I had missed something. I had said, I think that Georgia had only played in this game once we had played it in it twice. And thankfully this one wasn't like that one. I forgot the Boise state 
uh, game in the in the old Georgia Dome. That was part of the Chick Fil A kickoff. I had I had forgotten that, so I, I acknowledge uh, a mistake I made there. Um, and then I did want to. Uh, so this is hilarious. We always say that we're not going to track uh, our coaches over under his picks, but coach tracked them and he sent them to me. So I won't go line by line, but overall I went five and three on uh, coaches over unders and you went six and two. So you got the better of me. Uh, that was, that was pretty funny. I, I do know it does look like though, I will say apparently we hit the over hit on um, mentions of the fact that Dan landing coached at Georgia. So uh <laughs> I think that the, the over five and a half hit there. Um, so that's pretty funny. What else we got? I don't think I've, I don't think I've got anything else. Um, like I said, it was a beautiful, beautiful day. Uh, I got to spend it with, with my family. So my extended family. Um, I, I also like it was pretty, this was pretty funny. I did. I went and spent uh, the halftime with, with Hunter, went up and met up with Hunter. And uh, like while we were talking uh, out of the corner of my eye, I saw someone that recognized it's like a, uh, a woman who teaches with Kim at the middle school in Concord just totally out of the blue ran into her uh, at halftime. And I, that wouldn't have happened had I not met up with Hunter. So that was pretty funny. Uh, and then also we were sitting in our seats and we looked to our left and we saw like an entire family, some, some friends of ours uh, that we spend time with Fripp, uh, that we spend time with down at Fripp all the time. Uh, that family, we, we saw they were all in the same row as us, just one section over. And uh, when the when the stadium kind of started to clear out late in the game, they came and sat with us for the for the end of the fourth quarter. So that's pretty funny. It's just I don't know, like small world kind of things, and like your Mercedes Benz Stadium and running into <laughs> having things like that pop up. It's hilarious. That's funny. <laughs> I didn't get to see Hunter, so I was I was a little bummed about that Hunter. <laughs> yeah, Hunter, where were I'm a little, little, je- I'm, a little, I'm, a little I'm a little jealous of you and in, in your 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 ability to to. <laughs> pal around with hunter during the game oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah yeah that was yeah i was glad we were able to get that to work at least work out well good stuff man yeah i am, see, I am so mixed. what else do we got we, oh we haven't even talked about the best part of the game <laughs> okay do you know what the best part is can i guess what it what it is do you want me to guess Let's yes see if i'm tipped. I, I want you to guess okay my guess is the fact that we had the moment where the opponent is just desperately trying to get into the end zone uh, against our backups, and they couldn't do it late in the game. Is that it? <laughs> that's that's a great one because I, I appreciated that text. Like we've we've reached the point we've reached the point of desperation where we're trying to get a touchdown on the board. That's that's <laughs> a great that's a great uh, a great moment. No, my my personal favorite moment of the game was. When Kirby Smart's son uh, was dancing around <laughs> behind his dad in the post game interview, that was the best. You, you texted me that I hadn't seen it, so like when I was watching the replay, I had a huge laugh. And like I thought it was just like he he did it really quickly. No, he came back multiple times. It was a total <laughs> Carter. It was a total Carter move. <laughs> It was awesome. I love that kid, man. He he is hilarious. Like he he's he, he's living it up. Uh, he, he he's like the gift that that keeps on giving. Even with gifts, we 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 made a gift of that. But yeah, yeah, no, you're totally right. Like when I was watching it unfold the first time I saw it, it's like, oh, look, there's Kirby's son. He's kind of like he's waving at the camera, and then he leaves, and then he goes back, and <laughs> he just keeps doing it. Uh, that was awesome. Good call. <laughs> Good call. I I I am very glad that we didn't hang up. And have the oh shoot we forgot to talk about Kirby's kid moment. So thank you for, <laughs> for that. yes yes. There's Kirby's kid, and then you had um, what was it was it Payne was it Payne Stewart? I think it was that was yeah. like yeah jo- laughing around with the leather helmet on like that that was great too. Um, yeah. One thing that I will I, I do I'm, I'm not so sure again like the forty points pick and nicks or uh, pick. <laughs> Picking nits. Yeah, that was funny. Um, <laughs> picking picking nits. Um, the, the our our short yardage our short yardage defense. I feel like is something that if I were Kirby Smart, this is something that we probably need to work on. We had multiple like third down or fourth down and short short yardage situations that they were able to get pretty easily, particularly running it up the gut. 
Um, yeah. I don't know. That's just uh, that, that for me was just like a watch the space. I'd like to see how that develops over over time, but you know, uh, they, they didn't really have to stop them, obviously. But like, I would have preferred that they had stopped them. <laughs> Yeah, no, that, that that's one of those things where, like, when you're in the heat of the moment in the game, like, I was definitely like, oh, come on, guys. <laughs> like, they couldn't get off the field those, those couple yeah. of times. I know, I know, I definitely know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. And yeah, it is picking yeah. nits, but, like, again, right? Like, that's totally what Kirby's going to do. Like, he's going to show them those plays and be like, how did you not stop them or whatever? You know, like, because he, he, he wants perfection. I mean, you know, there were definitely some Kirby moments on the sideline where he was going nuts. Uh, I don't know. Actually, I don't know if I've sent you this one yet. Like when, when Bo Nix did the quick kick, Kirby was like freaking out on the sideline, trying to tell the defense that he was going to punt, that Bo was going to punt. And he was like pantomiming, like he's about to punt <laughs> to, the, to the defense. Uh, so that happened. Mm-hmm. And then uh, late in the game, the moment I was talking about when Oregon was trying to score, and we had all the pedal backups in, you know, I mean, like Kirby ha- had them all huddle up and like, he was going crazy. Um, you know, again trying to get those backups to to do their job like those are big moments right like i think back to 2017 when monty rice made like that fourth down tackle against mississippi state to to keep them out of the end zone uh it's it's awesome when you've got young guys uh being able to come in and and have a moment like that um even with the game not on the line but to like you know to to keep that end zone perfection i think it's a big moment for them yeah, he's gonna he's gonna be you know trying to trying to instill that fight um, for even even the backup. So that's that's good. Yeah, for sure. Yep, I don't have anything else. I don't have anything else. Um, Stetson Bennett for he- for Heisman. I guess we haven't really talked about his his straight up line. Like, I mean, twenty five or thirty one for three hundred sixty eight yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions. Had a quarter QBR rating of uh, ninety seven. Um, I believe that those are his yardage at least are that's a that's a personal best for him um particularly as it pertains to a win as I, if I if I remember correctly I mean I I think it's fair to say this was the best game he's ever played in Georgia would you agree Yeah he he looked he looked really good the 80 80 Mitchell touchdown pass was was phenomenal I'll be honest like when when we were when we were watching watching him in the replay, when I was watching him in the replay, like there were multiple points where I was like, "Man, dude, he's he's hit the gym." Like we th- we talked about that in the in the in the off season or whatever, like that we had heard. We saw the pictures of Stequavius and saw <laughs> some pictures of him from from uh, from camp and whatnot. But like actually watching him play, like sitting there watching him in the interviews, like he's got he's 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 bulked up. Like he's he's approaching this like he should be, which is. Taking yeah. it, taking his opportunity by the reins. He looked every bit the part of a starting SEC quarterback and returning national champion. And I think it's time everyone starts treating him like it. So, amen. Cool. All right, man. Cool. Well, huh? I know we will be. Oh, did you have something? I was just going to give the usual, like, we'll be back to talk about Sanford, but did you have something else? No, um, I don't. We, we, we heard, only thing I'll say is, uh, you know, we, we, we're talking about the snap counts. If you're curious about what those look like, head on over to Dog Central. Um, that's where we're pulling all the information from the, the ever-wonderful John Tweet Sports. Uh, he was able <laughs> to put that out pretty quickly for for the folks um, the day after the game. So good work, John. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, I was pouring through that this morning. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Cool, man. Well, yeah, so it started off the season in a big way. Uh, we will be back. Uh, to give an in-depth, deep dive analysis of the Samford Bulldogs later this week, <laughs> uh, and uh, <laughs> we'll definitely be soliciting uh, your questions uh, for that episode. So, with that, absolutely, yep. Hey, man, this was great, fun, fun to see you as always, and we'll see you next time. Go dogs! Go dogs! <laughs>